What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. This will be a spoiler free review for Cruel Intentions. The upcoming Prime series, which I believe is supposed to debut tomorrow by the time the embargo is lifted. So if this sounds familiar to you, yes, that's because it's in the same vein as the late 90s cult classic film. But inferior in every way. I'm just getting that out at the front to let you know that you're in for a bad review. It's because some of you might laugh, some of you might be disappointed, some of you might be feeling validated because you could tell from the trailer that this would be an utter pile of trash. So in this new adaptation, Cruel Intentions follows the elite students of Manchester College, a Washington DC adjacent university, where reputations mean everything, fraternities and sororities are the gold standard, and two ruthless step siblings, Caroline and Lucian, will do anything to stay on top of the cutthroat social hierarchy. After a brutal hazing incident threatens the Greek life system, They'll do anything or they'll do whatever is necessary to preserve their power and reputation, even if that means seducing Annie Grover, the daughter of the vice president of the United States. Hearts will be broken, loyalties will be tested, and secrets will be revealed in this modern day royal court that is Manchester College. Cruel Intention stars Sarah Catherine Hook, Zach Burgess, uh, you have Savannah Lee Smith. And then you have Sean Patrick Thomas back as one of the professors in the show and a few others. Now, Cruel Intentions to no one's surprise, is a hollow imitation of a cult classic that no one asked for. It's a series that highlights precisely why Hollywood is losing consumers to other forms of entertainment. After a hazing incident with a congressman's son goes horribly wrong, Caroline and her stepbrother Lucian work overtime to sustain their social status and Greek life. Similar to the late 90s film, there's a bet placed between the siblings to bring in the VP's daughter, Annie Grover, because how can the sorority of the VP's daughter be terminated? That's what Caroline is thinking throughout the show. Um, if Lucian, the inferior Sebastian, is successful in recruiting Annie, he gets to sleep with his less seductive but gorgeous stepsister Caroline. If Caroline wins, she gets his car. Where Cruel Intentions immediately goes wrong is the hazing incident itself. Manchester College is up in arms over it, but very little is done to convince the audience to care. The sequence itself is tame and does little to portray the incident as a dire situation. So as a result of this, a bunch of scenes are lacking stakes or any kind of momentum. So from the get, the series already forgets to have the audience hooked into what they are about to take us on a journey for. So as a result, you kind of are just being dragged along. That's what it feels like. You're, it feels like you're being forced to keep on going down this road or down this path. But they forgot to get you in the car seat before they started driving. So it's like, what am I supposed to get hooked onto here? There's nothing enjoyable. All the characters are unlikable. Yes, Greek life is jeopardized, but Cruel, Cruel Intentions presents the hazing incident in such a lackluster fashion, it makes the concerns several characters have hard to resonate with. Activists are working to ruin the Greek culture for good via these on-campus protests. The series just never justifies a reason to get invested in anything that's happening. The stakes it desperately wants to have are non-existent for most of the season. In the late 90s film, Catherine and Sebastian weren't likable characters, but they were at least somewhat compelling. These two knockoffs are just privileged. Annie and our other supporting characters aren't much better. Sure, Annie being down to earth makes me want to root for her. However, pairing her against these two dry manipulators puts a wrench in my interest. To no one's surprise, again, Cruel Intentions dialogue is trying to cram in every major buzzword of the 2020s, making several conversations unbelievable in the process because not many people talk like this. Luckily, once the checklist they're trying to fulfill is complete, character exchanges do become a bit more believable. And just as the show is about to end, Cruel Intentions does take a more intriguing turn thanks to the tension between Caroline and Lucian hitting a boiling point. If only the last six episodes were packed with the same amount of tension, Prime might have had a hit show on their hands. I don't know what it is with modern shows taking a small corner of Gen Z and then putting these type of shows out there as if all of Gen Z is like this. And what I'm getting at is this angle they went with to have something horrible happen and then have a group of activists opposing those that want to sustain or preserve Greek life. You cannot do that <laughs> when the incident that's supposed to have all of the students up in arms is portrayed to your viewer in such a anticlimactic fashion and then expect me to give a damn. On top of that, you're putting me in the world of a bunch of privileged youth. It's all, I'm already struggling to resonate with them there. You can't, you can't put me on campus with them and then make the campus activity uninteresting. That's what happened because your hazing incident just didn't do anything to justify my interest in seeing any side opposed to it or wanting to preserve it 
what side am I supposed to be invested in here? I'm not on anyone's side because you failed to get me hooked onto the journey you're about to take me on. It's just a bunch of scenes again that lack stakes, lack momentum, and as a result, I'm just watching, hoping that these episodes end quickly. And thankfully, they aren't that long. In fact, the hazing incident itself doesn't even hang over the series as it's progressing. It literally seems to be a focal point for the first couple of episodes, but then after those first couple of episodes, we're just on to nothing but drama, subplots, and random sequences that are motivated by said hazing incident, but the hazing incident, again, it's so anticlimactic, and you do nothing to make it feel important throughout the series that it's like, okay, what am I supposed to be resonating with here? What am I supposed to be invested with when I'm dealing with a bunch of entitled youth, privileged youth who are not compelling? They're not compelling. They're not likable. And then the incident that's supposed to at least get me interested in what they are, have going on in their lives is treated in such a you don't really matter kind of way. So what am I supposed to take away from that as a viewer? Sarah Catherine Hook, Zach Burgess, and Savannah Smith make the best of what they have to work with. Their efforts make up for how underwhelming the series is. Despite being inferior, Zach does bring some level of charm as Lucian. I just never fully bought this Lays Man angle. It's not as believable as what's present in that 90s film. And Sarah Catherine Hook, she was pretty convincing as a mean girl. I'm not going to take that away from her. And Savannah Smith does do a great job playing this innocent VP, daughter of a VP. Uh... All of them have great chemistry too. that little triangle of characters. They have great chemistry, especially when they share the scene or share the screen together. As far as the cinematography, the camera work, I dug the camera work at times. There's a lot of great tracking shots that help get you immersed in what's happening on campus. But the color palette, if you saw that trailer, you were right to think what you did, because I think that this show is hideous to look at the oversaturation at times just took me out of the show it didn't fit the mood of certain scenes or what they were trying to go for it does complement some of the intimate moments between Catherine or caroline and lucian at times during the show but some sequences when it's oversaturated like this it just takes you out of it because you're distracted by how everyone looks so fake on inauthentic and yeah it, it was just hard to really look at it it was an ugly color palette <laughs> But the camera work at times is great. Pacing wise, I thought the show was eh in terms of the pacing. Some sequences I thought went on for far too long. All in all, I'm going to have to say this show is a four out of 10. It is just bad. It has its saving grace with those last three episodes, but three out of eight doesn't get you the dub. Sorry. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you have my already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification. You can never miss a video. In the description, I have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.